Hello folks and welcome. Linux Lite 6.4, the XFCE desktop. And today I'm filming in 1920 by 1080 so you can adjust your um, YouTube player accordingly by hitting pause or stop and checking out your gear symbol and alter your screen resolution. I normally only film in two modes, either 1080 or 4K. Uh, today I'm going to talk about personal backups using something that you're probably already using, which is rsync and grsync. Uh, rsync stands for remote sync and if you're using time shift system restore utility you probably are already using rsync but i'm going to talk about um, using rsync for personal backups to usb devices in this case usb hard drive and usb stick is my example for today i'm going to show you how to write scripts from scratch i'm going to show you what they do i'm going to show you also rsync uh, grsync sorry grsync if you're wanting to do this in a graphical way from one source to one destination. This video will be more than two minutes. Uh, however, my videos also have timelines and chapters on them. I do encourage that you read my about section and uh, also investigate the community tab if you want to do keyword searches on my hundred plus videos. In either case, folks, welcome. So I'm going to close this box and open up my file manager. And uh, our user for today is Joe. It's just a made up name. Joe has lots of files in his documents folder and uh, he's got some junk folders and also music and um, pictures. I have two devices that are to play with today, a USB 2 and a USB slow. That's a USB stick and a USB hard drive. I'm going to first talk about uh, possibly formatting those devices before I continue. And uh, I would actually perform a um, something like a FAT32 if you want to uh, a file allocation table 32 if you want to share those files and folders with other machines such as Linux, Mac, and Windows, for instance. There are many ways to format USB devices. You can use um, um, Gparted, you can use uh, GNOME Disk Utility, and I believe this one is actually uh, installed, which is the USB stick formatter. I'm going to use that as my example for today. So um, whenever you use the stick formatter, whenever you ha have a USB drive in there, it will show up in your menu. So I have a 240 solid state drive connected to a USB cable. And then I have a 16 gig USB thumb drive. I call it slow. I just named them USB 2 and USB slow. If you're using the stick formatter tool, it defaults to the volume label of uppercase letters. I don't recommend spaces though. Something like this would be sufficient, or one, or two, or three, or however many devices. Or you can just call it backup one, backup two. That is your choice. And I would also recommend if you're wanting to keep it compatible, uh, use file allocation table 32 or FAT32. If you're using extension four, uh, be prepared to deal with file permissions. All right, this usually takes a couple seconds to format. So with that said, I'm gonna continue. Now, I am going to actually open up several boxes. So Joe is our user for today, and just a made up name, I'm gonna do a new window and another new window. Why am I doing this? Because I want you to see the files being copied as I continue this process. Uh, is that too big? I'm just trying to get, let me resize this one. Just slightly smaller. Now you can see a discerning line in between the two. So we're going to call this one USB 2 on that one and USB slow on that one. And now you can see the path. <clears throat> so what I'm going to talk, first talk about in this video is uh, scripts. And I'm going to show you how to write a script from, um, from scratch, what they do. And, uh, and then I'll talk about grsync. And grsync you'll have to install. rsync is already sitting in your background. Now, a lot of people don't know about this, but uh, I'm going to actually, actually let me just perform the script first and then I'll talk about uh, time shift which you're probably already using. So I, I threw in a folder called scripts. I just wrote one script and I duplicated them and altered them slightly. I'll pick the simple one called junk back on it and I'm going to open that with a text editor called mousepad. You should already have that. And that one is going to um, USB slow so let me change that to USB 2 and hit save. All right, so I'll talk about all of these things in a second, what they mean, and um, you'll see that it's pretty simple to do this, okay? So let me um, run this one real quick. 
All it's is doing is copying Joe's junk folder to this USB 2 through that script file. Okay, that's all this does. This one on the other hand, I'm gonna open this also with Mousepad, which is a text editor. And when you are writing scripts, I don't recommend anything like word processors. Use text editors. This one's a little bit more extensive. This is gonna copy multiple folders to multiple destinations. And um, I will also run that one. But I'm gonna delete this first. So I have a clean slate of USB 2 and USB slow. So while this is running, I'm gonna talk about a couple things. So when you're using um, rsync, rsync is remote sync. Let me open up this one just as an example. So I would encourage that you look up rsync on the internet yourself. rsync has many options. I highly encourage that you do that. This is going to continue until it's finished. And uh, rsync is remote sync. rsync is used in many, many things. You already probably are using it now if you're using time shift. System restore utility. Okay. When you open that up, when you started your wizard with time shift, hopefully you are using something for your system backups. I'm using time shift for this one. Is uh, your first option was to pick, and most people pick rsync, and that's exactly what I'm using today to copy not system files but personal files to these devices. I can also use rsync to copy uh, files and folders to hard drives. I do that regularly, as a matter of fact, on my other production systems. Okay, rsync is a very versatile tool. So uh, I will break this line down for you. So the bin bash statement is pound explanation point. Normally you just hit the shift key and number three on your upper row of your keyboard. It produces a pound symbol. While still holding the shift key, hit the number one key and it produces an explanation point. The forward slash is found somewhere near your enter key. Then you put in bin forward slash bash. If you can muster that one, you're halfway done. You can put as many rsync statements as you want and destination. So let me break it down for you. This is finished, by the way. That script here wrote four folders and two folders to this device and four to this device. This one is my faster of the two. You can also use internal hard drives for the same process. All right, let me break down the statement for you. rsync is remote sync. rsync has many options. Again, I encourage that you look that up on the internet. The dash A is archive. It's a very simple one to use, but it's very powerful at the same time. So rsync dash A, when I get into grsync, you'll see some different options. So what's the, um, so it's rsync space dash A, another space and a tilde forward slash junk. That is called source. That's the source I'm gonna be copying, the junk folder. Okay, I have one here already from this script, but I'm just using this one as a simple explanation. So the forward tilde just means that if I do uh, home folder Joe and junk, this is the same statement. Home forward slash Joe junk is the same as tilde forward slash junk. Tilde just means Joe's home folder in this case. Now the forward slash media Joe USB 2 is the name of this device. You can see it right up here in the text. The only thing I didn't do is put that extra forward slash on there. You can do it with or without. This is your source. I'm uh, sorry, your destination. So this is source going to destination media Joe USB 2. So far so good. Let's write one from scratch. All right, so you need a text editor for this. So I have Joe's home folder has one for junk too. Let's write a script to copy this folder to this device. We're gonna to go to the menu here and type in text. It all depends on what kind of text editors you may have installed after you did your initial installation. However, my installation has a default of this text editor. And I don't recommend word processor, so mouse pad. How appropriate, the little, little guy here for the icon. Anyways, you start your first line with the bin bash statement. I'm using the upper row numeric keys on my keyboard. Shift three produces a pound. Shift one produces an explanation point. 
and then I'm going to hit forward slash, which is found near my shift and enter keys, and then put in bin and another forward slash bash. Bash stands for born again shell. Hit enter. Your first line is finished. Now you can put as many rsync statements as you want. So I'm going to put in rsync space dash alpha or a space and then a tilde forward slash and then let's pick a folder. We're going to use um, junk2 because that's not in here. So junk2 is sitting right here. It's got to be spelled the same way though. Make sure your spelling is correct. Then put in um, where do you want to go? This is source now. Where's destination? Well, we're going to send it here. Instead of me typing that whole thing, I'm going to grab a hold of this line right here and right click on it. I highlighted it with my mouse and I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to click in here once and paste it. Control V. Then I'm going to get rid of that forward slash and then slide on over to number two on junk two and hit the space bar only once. If you hit it twice, this will fail. Make sure that you double check your work. Now that forward slash is butted up against the number two space bar once. That's it. I'm done. Now I can save it as. And I do recommend that you use that one. Documents, scripts, and what are we going to call this one? Well, we're going to call that one uh, junk to back, as in backup. Saving it to Joe's documents, or whatever your home folder is. Now I'm going to close it. We're still not done yet. So I'm going to go to my Joe, uh, home folder Joe, documents, scripts, and uh, we made junk backup here. And I want you to, I'm going to right click on it. I want you to notice that it says open with mouse pad, but the one next to it says execute. Then under that says open with. The same thing goes with that script there. That's because these are set as executable. This is not. It's currently a shell script, but it's not ready to go yet. So right click on your newly created shell script and hit properties and then permissions and allow this to be run as a program. Okay. This again, you're writing this on your own. You're not importing this from the internet. You're doing this yourself. So it's not a malicious script. All right, so what this is gonna do is gonna write um, or copy our sync wise junk to folder to this device here. This will be very quick. So pay attention, it's done already. If I double click it again, it'll, it won't do anything because it's already finished. I'm double clicking, you can hear my mouse. It's already finished. It's already finished. Okay, stare at this screen over here where my yellow mouse pointer is. I'm gonna double click on the, on the script file. It's finished. What makes rsync very fast is once it creates the folders and all the subfolders that go with it. Okay, remember there are subfolders in here too. rsync is very fast after it creates the initial folders and subfolders and files. Again, it does folders and files. And what makes rsync faster the second time around is the fact that it doesn't have to recreate the wheel. It doesn't have to recreate the same files it's already copied. It checks them though. So if you got a difference of something, let's take junk two for instance. Okay, we only have the A in here. Let me go to Joe's folder for a second and click junk two and add another file. Well, let's just add a hello world. Okay, you agree it has a folder now. All right, this one does not. So let me go back to the Joe script files and rerun that. And what you're going to see is that file will, uh, folder will just populate real quick. Done. It didn't have to recreate the file because it didn't change. There was no changes made other than the folder was, was created. That's what makes our sync fast. So in the case of this one here, I don't have to recreate all these albums over and over again. A lot of people do a copy and paste when they're backing up. RSync is a lot faster than that because it checks to see if there's any differences. And if it finds a difference, it syncs it up. Hence the remote sync part. People use RSync for many things. Remember, TimeShift uses it to copy your system files. I'm using it to copy personal files. Okay, so, so far so good. 
pretty simple to write. You can click this as many times as you want, but if the folder is already created, it's already done. Now, I'm going to talk about scripts uh, and uh, launchers for a second, but I'm going to dump everything in here so we have a clean slate to play with. This one's faster than this one. So you see this one, I, we just, I just wrote this script in here, right? Created that in Mousepad and it was pretty simple to write. And I could change that also by adding more lines. And I'll show that in a second, but we're gonna create a launcher for this script. In other words, a pointer. Right click, create launcher. You know, you can create launchers for a lot of things. If you've ever tried this one out, you can create logout launchers. Create, create. What does that thing do? It's your restart, whatever. You can also send that in the corner down here if you like. A little bonus tip for you. Now, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to create a launcher for this. Create launcher. So again, right click on your screen, create launcher. Just give it a name. I'm going to call mine uh, test. Uh, test one, how's that? I can put additional comments down or I could actually change the name. So like junk to backup, for instance. Give it something you know what it is. Or at least use a comment, you know what it is. However, the command line is what you're really interested in. So I'm gonna click that and go find my script files. And we're gonna use junk to backup as our guinea pig, okay? Since this is clean and empty. But instead of um, no icon, which will be a gear symbol if I continue, I'm gonna actually assign it an icon. And it normally takes a second or two for it to register, but you can also add your own images or icons. You have lots of choices when you're doing this. These are just icons, folks. You can pick anything you want. I'll pick the first one. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit create. Now it puts that down here on my desktop, so I'm gonna drag it over to here so you can see it. And all I'm gonna do is, is double click on that and it's gonna run that script file that I pointed to. This is just a pointer. It points to that script file that I got assigned. Now it's making a copy of junk too. The beauty of using launchers though is I can edit the script. Let me do that for you. So now I'm going to put in another rsync line by hitting control C or copy. Go to the end and hit enter and produce line number three and hit paste or control V. And I'm going to change this up a little bit. I am going to uh, click in here and put in music, for instance. It's still going to go to the same device, or I could make it a different device. I can add as many lines as I want. Okay, so double check. Is that spelled correctly? Does it have the right amount of spacing? Again, I can verify that by hitting delete and hitting the space bar once. It looks good. Sit, save, and run your script or I can just run the launcher. I didn't make any changes to this. I made changes to that though. What's gonna happen here is when I run this, you'll, you won't see anything happening here, but it will automatically create another folder here, the music folder. It's done with junk too. It's verified already that there's no changes. And now it's copying my music and subfolders and subfolders. And in this case, music art folders and blah, blah, blah. That's the beauty of launchers. Launchers just basically point to something like a script. And if you did the logout launcher, it points to the logout information. It's all about launching something. So basically you can create as many of these as you want on your desktop for any of these kind of scripts. So the scripts are used to, uh, in most cases, if you are syncing multiple folders or files. A lot of people will say, well, why can't you just rsync your home folder? That is bad advice. I'll tell you why in a second. I'm going to open this up in a little bigger format because you don't know what's sitting in here. If you're going to try to do this, either using grsync or rsync. Let me turn on hidden files. When you rsync and grsync your home folder, it's going to sync up everything in here. Everything that you see on the screen. These are hidden files and folders. You don't want that, trust me. It makes your backups enormous. You probably want your personal ones only. But you can if you like to. Just be prepared to wait a long time. And you make sure you have sufficient amount of space on your USB devices when you start that process. 
My advice to you is whether you create launchers or script files or use GRSync is to do uh, your personal folders, not hidden files and folders, unless you meant to do that. And there's maybe some reasons you want to do that. But in general, most people just care about their documents, their uh, maybe music and pictures, that kind of stuff. All right, so enough about that. I'm gonna clean up both of these because we're gonna use, um, sorry, I need to go up on this one at USB 2, and that was slow. So let's talk about GRSync. Now, GRSync, you have to install yourself. Now, if you wanna use um, Terminal to do that, you can also. And I also encourage that you look up GRSync yourself on the internet for options, for settings. But I'll talk about the basic ones here today. So let me open up Terminal for a second, and you can install GRSync in a couple seconds by doing this. I'm just gonna dump up my history buffer. And uh, there's the command for GRSync right there. Pseudo apt install GRSync. It gets the software from the same sources as your point and click application. Um, managers or, or um, package managers, I should say. Okay, sudo apt install grsync. You can always pause this and reverse the video. All right, so grsync is used to do what? It's used to, um, it's using rsync in a graphical way, but only one source to one destination at a time. Normally these are empty. So let me clean those up and let you see what it looks like when you open it up. All right, so I have one saved session. A session is a source and a, and a destination. When you're using GRSync, you're doing one source to one destination. That is the reason I showed scripts to begin with, starting right off the bat instead of this first. But however, if you wanna use this tool along with the scripts or use this tool only, that is your choice also, and your choice to use GRSync or rsync in general. But if you're gonna use um, GR sync, it's one source to one destination. The options here, I would recommend probably if you're going to alter this and the first time you used it, open up your uh, screenshot tool by tapping in SC in your search field and do an active window screenshot. Just advice, you don't have to. Same thing goes with advanced options and extra options. Again, all of these are options. Look those up on the internet. All right, I'm going to continue. So it's browse, source, meaning what are you gonna copy? And browse destination, what are you gonna to copy to? And then you can switch the two, be careful with that one. Simulation and execute are self-explanatory. And here's the rsync command line. Do you remember my script started with rsync-a? This one starts with an rsync-r-t-v space double dash progress dash s. And the double quotes just means I have nothing selected. So this one is a mouthful. All right, with that said, I am going to um, talk about this line here after I populate these two boxes a little bit later. Let's continue. So preferences, same deal. I would recommend a screenshot if you alter these things. And then, um, let's see, we're done with that. Quit is next, self-explanatory. And then sessions, add, delete, import, or export. Anytime you select a source and destination, you can hit the plus key and save it as a session and put it whatever name you want to. Okay, I have this one as an example, but it's blank. So if I use that as an open music to source USB to, this will become test one session, for instance. Okay, so I'll call that one test two, for instance. So that becomes a session. So default is blank session, but test two is that. Get that so far? All right. You can hit as many as you want and delete them. You can also do a dry run. What this is gonna do is um, it's gonna perform a dry run of music going to USB 2. In other words, nothing's gonna happen when you click that. It's just gonna simulate things. The actual run button is here. So we're gonna leave all the defaults alone and perform a simple rsync to USB 2. And I want you to see the rsync command line. The front part of this is the same. I'm trying to highlight that with my mouse. I'm trying to get the first R, but I'm not succeeding. So I'll start with the back end. So this part here is the same as 
when I started without these uh, boxes filled in. So rsync-r-t-v double dash progress dash s. Then comes my source. And instead of using a tilde, they use the whole folder name. And then the destination is media Joe USB, just like I put it in there with no forward slash on the tail end. So far so good. Now I'm gonna hit that play button. And you're gonna see this box will just give you uh, all the information while it's copying. And also depending on how big your folders are, it's however long it's gonna take. What would happen if I hit the play button again? Nothing, because it's already completed. It's completed successfully. However, when you did that though, it actually went and checked your folders and verified that there was no changes. Does that make sense so far? Example of this would be if I were to go to Joe's folder, go open up, um, we're doing music, and I'm gonna add another test folder. Okay, that is in Joe's home folder. I'm gonna go here for a second and take a look at this. And then I'm gonna hit the play button. Now it just created the hello world and it's completed. And the reason it was so fast is because it didn't need to recreate these. It verified them all and then created that. The same thing happens with scripts. It verifies. But I wanted to let you see the actual box on this one. Okay. Some people find this, well, maybe slower. And then, uh, of course, if you're deciding to uh, go, well, I'm going to do a shortcut and do my home folder. Uh, just be aware of this. If you are going to use your home folder as your source, it will not only copy these, but also these. Everything in here. Okay, I, I don't have the time to actually show this, but this will... This will stay on the cache folder for a long time if you decide to use your home folder, copying it to a USB device. And you better have enough space also, because this takes a long time to do that. So my suggestion to you, just advice, is to copy the personal folders instead of your home folder okay, to those devices. Whether you want to do it one at a time or whether you want to use scripts. Scripts are more versatile. You saw how I wrote those scripts. And uh, you also have the option of writing uh, also launchers, which makes it very versatile. And on that note, folks, I think I'm pretty much done with this discussion for today. And thank you for watching.